good morning students <coughs> today we will learn about the role of the parliament so you know that the very first class i explained a few points about the role of the parliament but here we can discuss some of the some of the main details the parliament in india performs a plethora of functions plethora means a large or excessive amount of something excess a plenty of no, functions these include legislature sorry legislative financial and judicial functions let's look at some of them in detail <clears throat> first of all function selection of the national government one of the most important functions of parliament <coughs> is to elect to the president <coughs> sorry the president is elected by by an electoral college consisting of members of state legislative assemblies that means mlas and the members of parliament when a single political party does not give the required majority to form the government different political parties come together to form a colossal government i explain about last class about colossal government and ruling government after interfering the result of the elections the leading party is announced as the ruling party and the prime minister is appointed as their leader then what happened uh, he select the he means prime minister select his cabinet ministers and distribute various portfolios among them this team works together to implement to the decisions of the government there are three categories of ministers to assist to the prime minister here that is uh, cabinet ministers cabinet ministers are the core of the executive and in charge of very important ministers ministries such as defense finance foreign affairs and railways next one is okay ministers of state ministers of state ministers of state have independent charges of some ministries are or placed under cabinet ministers third one is deputy minister deputy means assist deputy ministers assist to the cabinet ministers and ministries of state that's about the selection of the national government then second function controlling the executive a key element of parliament act democracy is that an executive is a part of legislature that is the council of ministers are a part of legislature as you know that last uh, last time i explained about that in a democratic country uh, in the three organs are there first one is legislature that is making the laws executive means implementing the laws and uh, judiciary to solve the dispute thus the parliament exercises control over the executive through various ways as we can learn one by one first one the government has to give an account of its uh, policies in parliament it is the highest platform where government policies or politics of the country are discussed discussed in the Raya Sabha and in the Lok Sabha, government policies are discussed. So, second point, whenever a bill is moved, the members can discuss its merits and demerits. Last year you studied about how a bill became a law. 
So whenever a bill is moved, the members can discuss its merits and demerits. The opposition can criticize the government inside the parliament if they think that the certain government measures pose a threat to the rights of citizens. Last I explained about the opposition party. Okay. So they, they have the right to criticize government policies and bills. And the third one is through different types of motions, Parliament controls the executive. So what do you mean by motions? Motion means what? In a Parliament, that is in Parliament procedure. A motion is a formal proposal by a member of a deliberatively deliberative assembly that the assembly takes certain action. It is a motion. No. So here, through different types of motion, the parliament controls the executive. The most important motion is called the no confidence mo motion. If the opposition moves a motion that the Lok Sabha does not have confidence in the con council ministers and if the majority of the members vote in favor of the motion. All ministers, including the prime ministers, have to resign. Okay. To be continued in next class. Thank you.